What's good, people? It's your boy Icarus Gray, and Nintendo's Direct was pretty good. Before we jump into this video, make sure you hit the like, hit the subscribe, and hit the bell so you can be notified for more content just like this. Let's get into the video. So, there were a lot of things that came in the Nintendo Direct yesterday. It was 40 minutes of, you know, games that are going to be released this year. So, I want to get into each of the games, my thoughts on them, and just kind of go through whether or not I was impressed or not. Let's do it. Fire Emblem Three Hopes, or Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes. It's a Dynasty Warriors clone, and I'm not really big on those. I was big on the Hyrule Warriors one because it's a prequel and it at least added some lore to Breath of the Wild, seeing as, you know, there was no Breath of the Wild announcement, but Fire Emblem keeps Fire Emblem. Next up is No Man's Sky, a wonderful expanse of exploring space and huge promises that were not given to us on day one, but have been promptly delivered now that there has been a lot of updates and things of that nature. I didn't get the initial chance to play it, but maybe I'm more inclined to try it now that it's on Switch, seeing as I know or think that they're gonna be trying just a bit more. Advance Wars Reboot Camp looks interesting i'm kind of into the strategy games i mean i did play final fantasy tactics a lot when i was younger but i don't really see this as a game that i'm going to be that interested in but i am very appreciative that they're doing a lot of remaking in terms of giving a lot of new people opportunities the chance to play these games first game that i'm actively interested in which is mario strikers battle league I mean, it's a Mario sports game and they're always really good. And Strikers was very underrepresented. And by now we've done tennis, we've done golf. We may as well do soccer, especially with the equipable gear and things of that nature. I think that it's gonna be a lot of fun and one of the few games that is allowing, you know, eight players all at once on one console, which, you know, let's do it front mission first yeah um another strategy game but just with mechs i'm almost positive i played one of these games or something similar on my playstation but this one i'm not all that pumped about but i do think that it's going to be very interesting because this seems to be the year of strategy games they're a bit like East Guys. Now we're going to Disney Speedstorm, which is a Disney Pixar kart racer, which is free to play, which will be out this summer. It's not Mario Kart 9, and I'd, I'd rather have Mario Kart 9. Star Wars The Force Unleashed. It's gonna come out on April 20th, 420 and it looks like someone who was celebrating 420 released the game. It's not looking too good so far. I mean, there was a Wii port and I felt like there might be some quality of life changes, but it's not looking like it so far. I do hope they do some different things with it to make this a bit more exciting because this is one of the games that I know a lot of people were excited to play. Assassin's Creed, the Ezio collection, meaning all games that star Ezio. Very good if you didn't already play the games and very exciting way to be able to take the Assassin's Creed games with you. He is the most dynamic of all the characters and I think the one that made a lot of us fall in love with the series. So I think this is something that I may or may not give a shot, but I'm leaning more towards maybe. SD Gundam Battle Alliance. It's Gundams, I don't care. They're chibi Gundams. It's not the kind of Gundam game I want. Ugh. Nintendo, why do you do this to me? Chrono Cross and the Radical Dreamers, or that Chrono Cross, the Radical Dreamers edition, basically, we're starting to get into some, well, it's Square Enix. I love Square Enix. 
I love Chrono Cross. I didn't get to play it as much, but I'm really excited for this. And I'm also excited that we're starting to get a lot of the exclusive games that you would not have gotten to play otherwise. Cause I think it's on the Satella, the Satella ReZero. Anyway, Chrono Cross, I love it. I think that it's gonna be a really cool year for Square Enix. I think that they're working on a lot of different things to bring to us uh, with Chrono Cross, Triangle Strategy, which is the follow-up to Octopath Traveler. They're really front-loading this year and I'm here for it. Klonoa, the Fantasy Reverie series. I initially thought that this was a Sega Sonic clone, which is what it makes me feel like, but it's kind of like Sonic meeting Kirby, which you would assume I'd be into, but I don't know. I mean, I may give it a shot. It seems very interesting and I don't really know quite what to think of it, but we'll see. Here we go. Kirby and the Forgotten Lands in mouthful mode. Waddle D Town, it's Kirby. He's my freaking mascot, man. Of course I'm excited. I've been needing more information. This game looks so cool. Light bulb Kirby is probably my favorite because the level design, the, the peak of it, and just trying to get through that area. Listen, I'm only getting good vibes from it. I do think it's still gonna be a little bit more linear than what people were expecting or hoping for it to be. But regardless, I'm so excited for this and I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. MLB The Show with cross progression. It's kind of cool if you're a MLB The Show player on the bigger named consoles or the bigger consoles and you wanna take your game with you to run a quick game or do a quick exhibition or something like that, seeing as it has cross progression and you'd be able to kind of advance the game with you on the go, but when it comes to games like MLB The Show, NBA 2K, and like Madden, I really want the bigger developers and, you know, better hardware. Kingdom Hearts Integrum Masterpiece for Cloud. It's a cloud game. The games that play out on the internet are always pretty interesting. Um, I mean, it's cloud save stuff and it's all in the cloud in terms of how the game is running because it's trying to run something that's a bit bigger than what the Switch can replicate. With this game, being that I'm a huge fan of Kingdom Hearts, I do think it's interesting. Zora's and Smash Brothers, amongst other things in terms of the fact that it's another Square Enix product. This Direct was pretty Square Enix heavy. Hmm. Next we have the Portal Companion Collection. Now, this one seems interesting. I never got around to playing Portal because I wasn't someone who was able to have a desktop with a lot of Steam accessibility. So having a game that everybody raves about that only runs for three hours is about puzzles. I'm definitely gonna be recommending this to my wife amongst other people in terms of things that I think will be very enjoyable as a portable experience and being able to, you know, play one of the best games or best review games that people are talking about or have talked about, I should say. Live Alive. I think this game looks pretty, pretty good. You have eight different heroes across eight different timelines and maybe those stories come together. It feels like a predecessor to Octopath Traveler. It seems like there's different styles with each of the different timelines that you can play through. And it's super cool. I mean, you go from prehistoric things all the way to the future future where you're like a robot. There's a psychic kid, there's a cowboy, there's multiple martial artists. I feel like there's a character for everybody and that's kind of fun. So yeah, this is on my list. Now we get to the thing that everybody's excited about, which is the Nintendo Switch Sports. They're not as many sports. They took off basketball and I'm kind of upset about that. I really like the basketball game, but this could be the return of Miis, and that's exciting because we all loved our Miis. Making our different characters and playing the different games. I mean, I was a golf addict 
played a whole lot of golf on Wii Sports. And it seems like they're gonna be working on developing a lot of different games. The soccer aspect of everything seems really cool. The fact that Batman is in here, that also seems kind of cool and kind of fun. And again, it's getting us back to the living room family fun that should be going with the Switch. Taiko no Tasujin Rhythm Festival. It's a rhythm game. There's a lot of songs, over like 200. I'm not good at rhythm games. I mean, I'm not rhythmically challenged or anything, but rhythm games just don't excite me. They just, they don't do it. But I would like to hear from the people who do like those kind of games. Are you excited about this? Is this something that you would be interested in, you know, playing and what's kind of sparking your gears about it? Triangle strategy. We know it's coming out, another Square Enix drop. There's a couple things that they were releasing with it in the demo in the fact that, you know, you can play up to chapter three and then transfer the data to the game once it comes out. And they've done a lot of community building in terms of getting all the bugs worked out and getting a couple of different things just to kind of see what it is that the, you know, testing the water, so to speak. But I mean, Octopath Travelers was a highly rated game. It's one that's still on my list of games to play and hopefully stream for you guys at some point. I'm gonna work on all these kind of things and probably, you know, not overwork myself to the bone. Next, we have Cuphead, The Delicious Last Course. So you basically get all of Cuphead plus all of its DLC, which I believe we've known about for a very long time at this point and just kind of been waiting for. With the upcoming Cuphead, you know, Netflix series, this just seems like a good thing. Metroid Dread free update, which is basically a hardcore player mode and a please come play this game mode. Uh, they gave you Dread mode and Rookie mode. In Dread mode, if you get hit once, you die. In rookie mode, you're able to get recovery items a little bit easier. So yeah, you should probably try this game out because it's probably the only way that we're gonna get Metroid Prime 4. <sighs> Sigh. For Nintendo Switch Online, which I'm glad finally got some representation, we're finally gonna be getting Earthbound and Earthbound Beginning. So for a lot of us who never got to play Earthbound and maybe our only experience with it was watching someone's playthrough, to be able to actually play one of the biggest games of Nintendo for a lot of people and being able to see Ness's story and just how endearing and warm this game is, I'm here for it. Zombie Army 4, Dead War. It just seems like zombies without Call of Duty and this was in the sizzle reel, so like, I don't care. Getsu Fumiden, Undying Moon. Another side-scrolling game that didn't get a lot of, you know, time, so I'm not sure how I feel about it, but it's probably interesting, I guess. The Demon Slayer game. It's, it's Demon Slayer. I love the anime. I, I normally don't have much desire to play any of the anime adaptation games, but I'm pretty sure that this is gonna do well, especially with how much popularity Demon Slayer is gaining with its current season. Lego Brawls. It, it's, it, 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 it's a Lego game, and I, I think it's side-scrolling and platforming. Lego Mark, uh, it's Lego guys. Two Point Campus, um, basically one of those builders like Roller Coaster Tycoon, but now you are doing a school and it seems interesting. Seems like you have classes on magic and other kind of things, at least from what the footage is showing us. And that's pretty interesting, I guess, like, you know, maybe. Yeah, I like games like that, yeah. I'm on board. So it's finally time, Mario Kart 8. DLC courses. I mean, I am excited, but this pretty much puts the nail in any sort of Mario Kart 9 until the next iteration of the system. At least they're trying. I mean, it is their the second highest selling game of all time. So eh, I don't fault them there. Last but not least, 
Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Look, I'm going to play one of these games. I've been waiting to play two for a very long time. I watched Chugga Conroy play the first game, well, and the second game. And I'm not gonna let him, I'm not gonna watch him play the third one because it's probably gonna take some years because good God, that guy does everything in that game. And this game looks massive. And there's so much lore tied in between Xenoblade Chronicles and Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Like, man, this game looks really, really good. And I'm excited for it. And I'm glad that they ended on this. But there's one more thing I need to say before I go, listen to me, Nintendo. Listen to me closely. Give me information about Breath of the Wild 2 or Square Up. So what did you think of Direct? Leave your comments down below and tell me what your thoughts were. What were you most excited about? What were you mad that they left out? Did you predict everything that was going to be on the direct? Let's talk about it. But while we're talking about it, hit that like, hit the subscribe, hit the bell, so you can be notified for the next time that we go live at Gray Area Anime. Peace. Hi.